Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Mountain National Photography. Join me in another nice clear night as we're going after some dark nebulae in the constellation of Cepheus. Last time we dealt with the dark shark, the angelfish, and my discovered object. Now we're going to take things a little bit off towards the eastern side and going to be focusing on the intergalactic dust associated around the Iris Nebula, the Ghost Nebula, and everything else. Now I've been having a lot of fun over the past couple of nights because we've had some really good weather and I really love the result that I got from doing a little bit more of just some broadband with the ultra wide field set up here in the constellation of Cepheus but there's still so much more that is located in that constellation itself. It is just riddled with tons of nebulae, lots of IFN and a lot of some dark nebulae. Well, I originally wanted to set up in the backyard and use the pier, but the problem is with our neighbors, they run irrigation here. And when that rotates around, because this is night two of this, it shoots all over in the backyard. So my backyard becomes absolutely useless because in the middle of the night, this is going to rotate around. And I don't know, they should really be doing these things during the day and not at night. Well, with the uh, minor hiccup with the irrigation, I've had to resort using the uh, old tripod just a little bit further back from where my pier would be for tonight because it doesn't reach this far. But here is what we're going to be working with once again. We're going to be using the Rockin' On 135mm f2 camera lens with my ASI Air 2600MC Pro, which is the one-shot color camera going to be using once again the AM5 train wave gear mounts on top of a little bit of the pier extension and the ZWO TC40 Comer fiber tripod. Underneath all this cable mess is the ASI Air Plus which is my custom cable management and protector for the ASI Air in general. Guiding tonight I'm going to be using the ZWO ASI 120 Mini. And the guide scope will be the SV Bonnie 30 millimeter guide scope for the complete package of doing another ultra wide field in the constellation of Cepheus. Now with that said, we're gonna be waiting for nightfall and go ahead and now having to repull our line and set up our image sequence once more. All right, now our polar alignment is all ready set to go. Let's go ahead and look at our image sequence. I have started on this target for the last two nights, so this will be night three and will probably be the final night for this area as I'll probably get about 24 hours of data very similar to what I got with the uh, Dark Shark region. So we're going to go over to the plan. We're going to go ahead and start looking at our details here. I'm going to go ahead and reset the plan itself. I also want to change the timing now since it is getting a little bit darker, you know, a longer in the night. So we're going to go ahead and just do like about 6.15 or so because sunrise is roughly about 6.45 now these days. So anything after that is just going to be too much light. So we're going to go into the details for this. And what I've selected is actually I'm doing five minute subs this time around. Really no need to go 10 minutes like with the other one. And I just did 150, which I'll roughly get about 100 uh, frames tonight for this. And the image area of what we're looking at is actually right here. So you have a bit of the Iris Nebula right here towards the left. And you have the ghost that's not too far away, Gubadagian. 
And then we do have a lot of other interstellar dust that is surrounding this area here. So there's going to be a lot to look at once this is all done and complete. So let's go ahead and go back to the beginning and hit our wonderful plan button and let it do its thing. Now the first image will be rolling in here in just a few seconds so we can kind of get a gander of what we are looking at with just one single exposure. Guiding is still pretty darn good tonight. It's been varying between about 0.9 even all the way down to about 0.5. And here we go, right up the top here, that is the Iris Nebula. Putting some annotations on here, so you can see all the individual areas. It's also SH2133. You got a few uh, open clusters down here, IC5134. You got Alfric, Alderman. Oh no, nice beautiful area, and it's kind of hard to see too. If I really start cranking up the exposure here on the camera there is some faint uh, dust that you can see in the background especially when we start getting near the corners especially over here well, there's a lot of dark nebulae that is in place so we're gonna let this run again for tonight and then I'll see you back after we are done stuck uh, stacking the data <laughs> All right, now we are back at the computer. Went ahead and stacked all of this data. I tried something a little different this time since I am severely undersampled with my current setup with the Rockinon and the APS-C sensor. I drizzled four times and it took eight hours just to drizzle all of these images for 24 hours worth of data. And this is what we're left with. So here it is straight out of the stack. And you can see, it doesn't really look like much of anything, doesn't it? We do have the Iris Nebula here. You have a little bit of some dark nebula. We have a little bit of this hydrogen arc here. So first thing I did is do a little bit of some dynamic background extraction, which going through there, made it to like this. I had to continue to keep working at it so it looks something like this. Then I ran some Blur Exterminator. Then I had to do a little bit of some image solving to make sure I can plate solve. Went ahead and did SPCC, Spectrophotometric Color Calibration. And then here is the stretch, at least initially, that we can see, you know, the iris is looking great already. We can already see the ghost nebula here. Also some other really cool features which and the final image really highlights what is going on. There is another reflection nebula here. There's a really cool feature over towards here, but hidden in plain sight, which we had to really process out through here is a nice reflection nebula. Now, once again, just like with the dark shark, I spent at least two days on it. So I'm not gonna be going through the entire process, but let me tell you, this has just as much detail as that Dark Shark Nebula. And this is what we got. Look at the Iris Nebula here. It is so bright. You have the ghost through here. There is so much dust all on this image. Down here is really cool too with this dark structure here. Really, really like this one. Go over towards the top, there's another reflection nebula right around this bright star. Heading over a little bit here, we have more dark nebulae and a nice reflection nebula. And what I was talking about earlier with that one region, there's a very bright blue reflection nebula around this star here that I never even knew existed. Beautiful H.A. arc. Right around the outside of here, another big reflection nebula on the left-hand side here. All in all, phenomenal image yet again, but now we are also 
heading more to closer to towards the full moon, which there is a lunar eclipse coming up. So I'll have another video on that as well. It's not going to be anything, you know, spectacular. It is going to be a partial, unfortunately. So here's another image here. Going to be having another video here very soon as well of imaging something else that I'm currently finishing up the project for. So if you keep liking what you're seeing, please leave a like, comment, subscribe to the page. It really does help me out. Be sure to check out Out in Astro Prints. And also, I have some affiliate links down below if you plan on, you know, buying anything from Agena Astro, ZWO, High Point Scientific. And if you're curious about what kind of equipment that I do use for all of my projects, I'll have those all down below. Thank you as always, clear skies, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>